Hello. All right, so today we're gonna have a little bit of a different video. We're gonna talk a little bit about having a Tesla and owning a Tesla and what comes with it. I've recently had an accident with the Tesla, so it's a whole thing. So one, uh, it's gonna be kind of like a vlog style. So we're gonna go take the car, we're gonna wash it, and we're gonna check out the damage. It's not too bad. Um, I wasn't in the car when it happened. And then I'm gonna do kind of like a mini series of going through the process of actually repairing this. Cause I've heard uh, just getting any repair on a Tesla is a headache. Um, and then also I can do a little bit of a review after almost a year of ownership of the Tesla and 11,000 miles. So we'll do the things I like, things I don't like, and why maybe you should get one at this time right now, March 2023, almost April 2023, and just what are my thoughts on if someone coming from previously owning just SUVs, gas guzzlers going to a smaller car, an EV, what that's like, and also as a car person, what is it like owning a Tesla, an electric car, no engine, no sound? Um, it's It's been definitely an interesting ride, I will say, I love the car, so I'm not going to hate on it too much, but I wanna be honest uh, about everything because I've gone from owning very reliable cars, Toyota, Lexus, Subaru, to now an American-made Tesla, new company, you know, these other companies have been around for so long. So we'll go into a little bit of that, what it's like, what it looks like, but first, let's go wash the car. So as you can see, the Tesla is a little bit cleaner, but when I was trying to wash the car, the power went out in the uh, car wash bay. So I couldn't actually like wash it very well, but it looks a lot better now. It was covered in grime and salt. It was just, it was just really bad. So anyway, let's talk about what happened with the car. So on the front, you might see from here, there are some marks on the front. So. I was parked in a parking garage and like 10 minutes before I came down to the car to drive it, somebody had backed into it when they were backing out of their spot. Like it was it was the most, I don't know, mediocre accident. I mean like it was all caught on video. I'll probably put the video on there uh, like right now over this. Um, but yeah, so now I've got to get the front bumper changed. It has a, a clear wrap on it as well, so I'll have to get rewrapped. So we're going to go through that process and see what it's like. Because, of course, dealing with insurance is one thing, but getting a Tesla specifically repaired, that's a whole nother thing. So it's definitely different. It's a little bit windy, sorry if you can hear it. But I'm going to go over the five things I like about the car, the five things I don't like about the car here. All right. so. Here's some things I do love about the car. One, the storage space. It's huge, it's got tons of space in the back. As you can see, I have an SUV back there. And honestly, I sometimes take the Tesla over any of the SUVs we have because it just has so much usable space. Under the trunk, in the trunk, put the seats down. I often go skiing with this car. The frunk, it's just great. It's super usable for every day, uh, going to Costco or even going up to the mountains. So it, we've done big road trips in this car and it's been fantastic. So that's number one. Number two, obviously the technology, it's fantastic. I love having Spotify, Apple Music in the car, the dash cam, super helpful, especially, especially when someone hits your car. Um, so that's great. And then three, kind of going off of that, is the software updates. The car gets better with more time. So since the almost year that we've owned the car, the car has gotten better. I can take Zoom calls from the car. The sentry mode no longer just like flashes the high beams at you. It just kind of pulses the lights, just things like that. It just is constantly getting better. Now the, the heated steering wheel is not like super hot. It'll go automatically with the climate control, whatever temperature you set it. So that's also a nice feature. Number four is just like the acceleration, the speed, the sportiness. I've always driven SUVs and those are great for going off road, but we have some wonderful canyon driving roads here. I you know, live by the mountains. And so it's just super fun to just drive. Uh, even passing or going to work, it's, it's a great time. So it's very fun, I love that. Um, number five is 
no more spending a ton of money on gas. You know, obviously with the SUVs, uh, they take a lot of gas. I get maybe 14 miles per gallon on a Lexus GX and then the Toyota 4Runner maybe 17, 18. They both have all-terrain tires, uh, which are oversized for you know their, their, their respective size. So definitely is nice to not have to pay for so much gas. I'm spending like $100 on gas every week for the Lexus. So this is a huge cut down on cost in that sense. So what about some things I don't like about the car. Well, number one, um, the fit and finish when we first bought it was not perfect. We did have to take it into the Tesla service center. Uh, they had to touch up the paint on a few things and they had to get the, uh, the window trim redone because it had overspray from the blue paint on it. So that wasn't great. Uh, number two is you can see it's a bit cold here. We're <laughs> transitioning from winter to spring, although it should be spring. It's it's pretty cold. Uh, we just got a, like a big snowstorm. But anyway, I digress. The range does get cut by I would say maybe 20%, 10% in the cold. When I don't park it here, where it's plugged in all the time, and I park it like in a in a parking garage overnight, I do notice it loses. I don't know, maybe like 5% of the battery. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you are keeping this unplugged overnight in a cold place. So number three, uh, it's just not the right size if you want to carry a lot of people all the time. Obviously that was my choice. I got the Model 3, not a Model X. Um, but on longer road trips, which we've done in like California or to Colorado, you definitely, are hoping for a little bit more more space especially in the in the rear um it, it is pretty spacious for its size it competes with the mercedes c-class bmw 3 series um audi a4 which comparably do have a little bit less leg room however just you know on those long trips um you do notice that as well as in the summer going to california with the glass roof it got super super hot like you you felt like your head was getting a sunburn if let's say you didn't have hair um so definitely i would suggest if you live in a hot climate like phoenix get a sunscreen sunshade for the top they do sell that on the tesla app after you've taken delivery of your car or you just get it like tinted more but yeah that those kinds of issues so like passenger issues that would be like number four uh number five is when you buy a tesla sometimes they might actually get rid of features later so currently this car still has the ultrasonic sensors which are great for parking i like having those but if you order now you will not get ultrasonic sensors uh currently there is no parking aids with this car uh if you buy a new one now uh obviously this does not affect me but it affects newer buyers so Tesla says they want to use Tesla Vision, which is all the cameras around the car, to act as parking sensors. However, this is not widely available yet, and just barely this week has been rolling out to some people who have the full self-driving package, which is $15,000. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, potentially, it is a rumor that they might get rid of the functionality of the ultrasonic sensor on cars that do have it. I hope they don't do that because I do like it um, in favor of the Tesla Vision. I think the best is a combination of both. So definitely uh, not ideal, but it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, they often do make these kinds of changes. Like my car does not have the lumbar uh, in the passenger seat, so you can't change that. Uh, whereas cars prior to it did so something to keep in mind however the cars are always getting better hopefully right <laughs> it's like getting a new iphone hopefully it's better than the last one but i love this car overall it's been amazing i try to drive it as much as i can in less than a year it already has 11,000 miles so it's definitely been put up to the challenge uh we'll see what happens with the accident on the front how that process goes i'll definitely keep you updated but again thank you for watching don't mind the wind noise and i'll catch you in the next one please like and subscribe